What's going on, guys? We have reached the end of the week once again. So you know what that means? It's time for Last Call. What's going on, guys? Brian Jack. Of course, this is the last call show. That's right. We're talking about comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night, August 24th. Unless you're DC, you're talking August 23rd. But let's not get into that. We're going to get into those books here in just a minute. Jack, we reached the end of the week. I'm ready for the weekend, my friend. Oh, yes. Me too. Me too. This is that uh, last recording day of the weekend. We got one more meeting. Uh, you know, got to talk important, very in business. But Definitely ready for the weekend. Uh, I am worn out. Yes. But end of the week, coming into the weekend, this is probably my favorite show because we're talking about those books that you can pre-order, get those discounts in, guarantee your copy. That way, when you go to pick it up while everyone's else hunting for these books, you already have them in hand. And we're going to get into it right now with the first book, one of our favorite titles, two of our favorite creators and David Boomer and Drew Zucker. And we are talking about Canto 2, Hollow Men, issue number two. That's right. Now, you know, this is no secret here. We, we've been supporters of Canto since day one. But Canto has also seen extreme secondary market success. And I would expect this to continue with the second volume. We talked about when we were talking about issue number one, that we felt like based on the sales of the one shot that it would be under ordered. Um, I would expect to see the same from issue number two. You usually look at about a 50% drop off. Now, if you look at the first volume of Canto, it picked back up again around issue four, but that was the first volume. This being a second volume, I think there'll be even more kind of uh, negativity and trepidation about putting in a pre-order uh, for this because you'll think of all of the kind of negative tropes that, say, a second volume has had over the years. But the reality of the situation is Canto is a very cult popular uh, character. It's a very cult popular uh I'll even say like line or universe now um, as we're sitting here with a one shot and now two volumes um, into a, a property. So um, do not sleep on Canto. I don't know how much more warning we can give you about this character and these issues, but I would especially pay attention to that one in 10 incentive. Yes. One in 10 is great. I actually like the regular cover better, but you made great points for that one in 10. Also make sure you guys check out friend of the channel Andy, comic man Andy, a lot of people know him as. We know him as friend, family, but he's also part of that comic core. He just hosted that Canto panel at Mainframe Comic Con. Make sure you guys check that out. But don't fret. We are going to be having David Boer, Andrew Zucker back on Superman's Comics YouTube very soon. Here we're getting into Star Wars Adventures number one. What was once considered just an all-ages comic has picked up steam. And here we are starting with issue number one again. It's going to have a bunch of different covers for it. There's also that one in 25 to pay attention to, right? That's right. And this is not a cash grab like a lot you see on with a lot of publishers who switch back to number ones right when a series begins to get popular. Um, IDW always kind of planned these to be short run series that they could kind of reboot almost like with seasons, especially in the Star Wars universe, because it allows you to play with different timelines. And we're going to see a timeline jump going into this volume. Um, so I think that this is going to allow for kind of IDW to be able to play with the most amount of toys in their in their toy chest when it comes to um, Lucasfilms and all of those properties. And we've seen the same with say some of the Marvel action stuff um, going on right now, as well as some of their other licensed properties. There's a one in 25 incentive for this one. And we've talked about IDW books with one in 25 incentives being on a one. There's certainly some impressive store exclusives out there. I'd certainly be on the lookout for those. Um, but at the same point, um, this is one that I think is going to have dual popularity because it seems to be connecting with Star Wars collectors as well as getting some solid reader buzz from an all age book. Getting over to Marvel for a second, we're getting that new reboot also with Iron Man number one. This is an issue that's been 
largely talked about. We got Chris Cantwell writing this. There's also been some spoiler alerts going around with this story, so it might be one worth picking up. It's got a bunch of different covers for it. Also, that has that Alex Ross Timeless variant. There's a bunch of those Alex Ross Timeless variants that are starting to hit this FOC, so if you're interested in those, make sure you pay attention to that as well. Yeah, see, like, you can list a bunch of things that I think um, have, this series has going for it. I like Chris Cantwell. Um, there's definitely some spoilers out there that, that this story is going to go some places. Um, and then also the fact that there's certainly some some amazing cover art. But you know what, Brian? That is basically um, the same as every time we reboot an Iron Man series, which in, since 2014 feels like basically an annual event for Marvel Comics. Reboot an Iron Man series whole bunch of brand new incentives a whole bunch of stores jump on board they do their uh you know shiny iron man suit variants uh everybody jumps in uh and makes money on the variants a little bit if you go back and look at iron man number ones you won't see alex ross books even selling for ratio um that's that's kind of been typical so i i've learned my lesson i've, I've ridden out enough iron man number ones um and taking losses on them to say that I'm staying so far away from this one. I will pick up one copy and I will read this book because I like comics and I want to read and I want to see how it is, but I haven't enjoyed an Iron Man story in a long time. Solo story. I haven't, um, I haven't been able to make any money on an Iron Man series in the last several years. I don't think anybody else has either. Um, so it, it, it's one of those things where um, this is one of those ones where, I, I'm not surprised it's getting rebooted and it'll get a lot of attention because Iron Man is certainly a big name at this point coming out of MCU. But uh, I don't know that it's really going to move the needle on the comic market. Yeah, most of the Iron Man mo books that have moved is be not because of Iron Man itself. It's usually Riri Williams or Ironheart or coming out of that storyline. To me, Iron Man is for Marvel is what Superman is for DC. Huge well-known well-liked characters that just the comics are kind of just don't really live up to the hype except for i loved the superman run right after the rebirth launch wasn't much of a didn't really care for the bendis stuff too much but that's not that i don't like bendis it's just i liked tomasi writing it better Sticking with Marvel for the next few picks, we got the big Donny Cates books, right? We got Thor number seven hitting FOC as well. Yeah, now usually this is the point, Brian, right, where I come in and it's my job to sell the Simple Men's Comics family on why this selection that we have made is the one that maybe you should be paying attention to or putting on your FOC order sheets, putting in those previews pull boxes or wherever it is that you are pre-ordering your comics. But you know what, Brian? I just can't bring myself to do it with this one. I don't know why I would have to sell anyone on Thor at this point in the game. Now, certainly Thor 6 uh, ended some things, made some people feel some sort of way about their previous spec on issues like, say, 4 and 5. Have no fear. Downing Cates is a master storyteller. Either way, that last page, splash page, is going to lead us to some new things. It's all going to kick off in seven, definitely. Um, I imagine everybody's going to be on board with this issue. This is the hottest series going in comics right now. Um, and if you're going to argue that maybe it's not, then there's one other one, Brian, that could possibly take that crown, and it's the series we're going to talk about next. And that is, of course, Venom with the upcoming Venom 28, which is also hitting FOC today. And again, it's the same thing. Um, it's the same situation as, as Thor. This is a run that is on fire. We've seen 25 sell out, do good money on a secondary market. 26 and 27 do the same. I expect to see 28 do the same. The cover art was very uh, late added. Um, I think that we'll see how that plays out. We see Eddie Brock on the cover kind of coming out of the symbiote. Um, definitely, this is a story that has captivated people. Definitely, it's one that has had the secondary market buzzing. And anytime you can kind of hit both collectors, speculators, and readers all at once, you've got to hit on your hands. And Donnie Cates has two of them. Also, speaking of Venom number 28, our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, has that kick-ass Venom 28 exclusive variant, right? We talk, you know we're fans of wrestling. You could say boxing also, but we got the championship belt. We got all types of great references in there. That's going to be available at frankiescomics.com. So make sure you check out the website to get all the details there.
leaving the big two for a second, getting back over to the indie. I wouldn't even call this an indie because this is a powerhouse publisher that we're huge fans of. And you know, we love this book. That's right. We're talking about Seven Secrets, number two. We've told you the first issue was great and you guys read it and the great feedback we've received is about the same. But we've also told you if you like number one, number two will blow you out of the water. Isn't that right? Yeah, I don't know that this is necessarily a speculation pick. It is an absolute must read. If you read issue one and even were on the fence about it, definitely check out two. Um, it, it just doubles your interest in the series as it is and will have you really, really ready for issue number three. So definitely number two, I think, is going to be a heater. It's going to increase popularity in the series. Uh, I think number two is going to get more attention on number one. I would be also paying attention at, if you're at your LCS, picking up those back issues of number one, check out that second print, be on the lookout for that upcoming third print. Definitely head to simplementscomics.com, check out that Jung Young Yoon uh, exclusive version variant, as well as that Gleb Melnikov uh, set of second print exclusives, homaging the first appearance of Miles Morales, again, at simplementscomics.com, as well as the 616comics.com. But, you know, I, I think at this point, this is a series that I'm a big believer in. It's got that something's killing the children vibes. I think we'll see the obvious drop down from issue one to two. Plus, with you only find them when they're dead and Berserker coming behind it, I think some of like the boom crowd will, will begin to put attention elsewhere. Number two being as good of an issue as it is, I think it's going to catch people off guard. This is one of those rare opportunities where we get to give the Simmons Comics family the straight spoilers. We read the book. It's good. I don't want to give it away to you. But, I mean, it is amazing. It was a standout. So, and I think it'll be a standout on this release day. Even coming out on that same day, my store seven and Venom 28, I think you will enjoy reading this book just as much, if not more. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think, it, it, I don't think it will, but there's a slight possibility that it might get overlooked with those bigger titles coming out. But we're telling you not to overlook it. Definitely pick it up for the read alone. We guarantee that you'll like that. If you, we guarantee if you like this, you're number one. Issue number two oh, yeah. will double down for sure. Now, remember, we told you DC's final order cutoff is a day before Diamond, so you want to make sure you get this order in early. And we're talking about that Batman issue number 99. You got the regular cover, but I absolutely love the Derek Chu cover B for this. Yeah, and so on social media and looking at pre-sales to the secondary market. Now, you're getting, obviously, um, Derek Chu is a popular artist, but I don't think it's so much artist-driven as it is the fact that we are getting a kind of clown hunter solo variant. Um, this, to me, gives the vibes of the art germ uh, Batman 92 variant, which really kind of showcased and gave a little personality to Punchline. More than or even the Batgirl, variant. Batgirl number 12 from years ago. Sort of, but I, it, I more mean the fact that it, it gives personality to a new character. You know, when you get those design variants, you're not you're not getting all out of personality. You're getting the look, but you don't know who the character is. And I feel like both uh, the the Batman ninety two variant and this one do a better job of introducing the character to the masses. This character almost has a frantic look to it, um, and I think that this one's going to be popular. Now, of course. This will be readily available. This is Batman. Nobody's missing this issue. Nobody's a, is going to sleep on this. Um, and also, you get the reader buzz of being in the middle of the Joker War towards the end, uh, getting closer to the conclusion. But at the same point, I definitely think this is one you're going to want to pick up. I can't guarantee Clown Hunter is going to be a character long term. Um, but I think he's a character that is very intriguing. That has a lot of people interested in, in his possible potential. Um, very violent, very deranged, very, very almost funny and interesting. Yes. But it is important to know also if you're collecting those one in 25 variants, there's one for this as well, right? Yes. So we've given you a bunch of picks so far, but now it's time to get into what we like to call the Indie Showcase for the week. The Indie Showcase is brought to you by Black Cape Comics at blackcapecomics.com. All the books that we talked about in this video, as well as what we're about to talk about in the Indie Showcase, are available to pre order from blackcapecomics.com. And the first indie book we're going to talk about this week is Heavy Number One. This is the new series from Vault Comics, right? Yeah, that's right. And Vault's been rolling out these number ones 
um, as post pandemic, they, they've definitely had some projects put out and we get another one here. This one, it's kind of billed as mixed between the Punisher and Preacher. Um, obviously sounds cool. I'm kind of over the whole, a mix between this and this kind of solicit, but that seems to be the popular way to go about selling a brand new comic series. But again, another another new one from Vault Comics, sure to get the indie comics crowd's attention. Um, the pulp variants have been doing very well. They've, they've been a good change of pace since switching from the Vault Vintage line. Uh, and and uh, I expect to see this one get kind of some initial buzz. But Vault has kind of fallen back a bit. There hasn't been that real drive on the secondary market. So this is one I would suggest to my readers. Probably not one for my investors. I'm still on that reader buzz kick with Wasted Space. It's still probably one of my favorite titles from Vault. But the next one we're talking about in the showcase, this actually is going to come out, if you're talking FOC, this comes out the week after, right? This comes out on September 30th. But this is from SourcePoint Press, and it's Prisoner number one. But we also want to bring this up is this Saturday at BlackCapeComics.com at 8 p.m. Eastern. Black Cape's going to have their own exclusive limited print run of the Prisoner number one by their artist that works in the shop, Brandon, also goes by Brand Flakes, fantastic artist. Got the covers up on the screen right now. So if you're interested in that, make sure you go to Black Cape Comics this Saturday night, August 22nd at 8 p.m. Eastern to get yourself a copy of that. But the last one I want to talk about in the indie showcase, this is, we'd probably save the best indie book for last. And we're talking about Stillwater from Image Comics. I'm a huge fan of Chip Zdarsky. Everyone knows loving that Daredevil run, but he really hits his stride on those creator-owned books. And here he's coming with his flavor of horror, right? With Stillwater number one. Yeah, and see, this is what interested me so much in this book is when I, I think Zdarsky, I think zany, I think funny, I think- Sex um, criminals. Yeah, well, that's where you get that from, right? Um, and then, you know, some of his stories in whether it's Spider-Man Life Story or Daredevil have been more kind of introspective stuff. And here we're coming with horror. I'm really intrigued to see what he's going to do in this space. So this is one I was very interested in as soon as it was announced. Um, I think this is going to be cool. This comes from Skybound. So this comes from like the Robert Kirkman uh, crew. So this is definitely one to pay attention to. And I'll tell you, Brian, we were so interested in this book. And this is full disclosure for Simpleman's Comics family. We went after 500 copies. You're going to see an exclusive Simpleman's Comics and the 616 Comics variant from for this one coming soon with cover artist Juan Doe providing cover art. But, you know, we were we believed in this book. So we definitely want to let you know that because it was one that we were paying attention to and we think you guys should as well. So there it is, guys. That's the Indie Showcase for this week presented by Black Cape Comics. Again, go to blackcapecomics.com where you can pre-order all the books we talked about here as well as that exclusive variant they got hitting Saturday night at 8 p.m. for The Prisoner from SourcePoint Press. But as we always do, we don't want you to leave right now because this is one of the best parts of the video. We're going to get into those additional printings that are hitting final order cutoff as well. That's right. We've got an ever-expanding list, Brian. It seems like uh, late printings are coming from all over the place, but we're going to start off with some major heavy hitters. We've got Deceased Number 1 coming with a fourth print with a major Peach Momoko cover. That is one to be on the lookout for. Again, note that special DC uh, FOC date. Secondly, we've got Thor Number 6 coming with that second print with that excellent Thanos splash page. That's one to be on the lookout for. X Factor number one comes with a second print. Star number two comes with a second print. We've got Magnificent Miss Marvel 13 coming with a second print. We've got Captain Marvel 19 coming with a second print. We got Something's Killing the Children number eight coming with a second print. And that's one to pay attention to if you saw what number seven second print is doing. Also from Boom Studios, we've got Dragon Movie Dawn number one coming with a second print. We've got Wind number three coming with a and finally, from Vault Comics, we've got Bleed Them Dry number one coming with a second print. So there it is, guys. Those are our picks for Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday night, August 24th, or Sunday if you're DC. But let us know in the comments what books are you guys interested in picking up. Is there a book that we didn't have on this list? As you know, that full Final Order Cutoff list you can find over there at simplemanscomics.com. We have that up for you for Diamond and UCS. We'll have that full list over there for you to check it out at simplemanscomics.com. But 
With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.